What's up guys, what's going on man, I'm Paul, this is Falling Theology man, and I've had a lot of questions asked to me here recently about the name of Jesus. And at first I wondered um, the importance of it. And so I asked a friend and what she told me was that if I knew somebody for a long time and then found out that their name was something other than what I had been told, then I would feel like probably I didn't know them at all. And she's absolutely right in the way that we know Jesus's name is not only by Jesus, but it's also through the scriptures that we read. And so when we see that Jesus's name might not be Jesus, then not only do we feel like we don't know the person Jesus, but that the scriptures as well might be in question. And so I want to avail that uh, uh, I want to cause us not to have any stress or anything over the term or the name of Jesus because his name is Jesus. So what is the deal then? Why do some people call him Yeshua? Um, what does that mean? Well, Yeshua is his Hebrew slash Aramaic name. Okay, so Yeshua equals Jesus. Well, I'm sorry. Actually, let me go back. Yeshua equals Isu. So Yeshua translated from Aramaic to Hebrew equals Isu in Greek. Isu in Greek is a transliteration or equals Jesus in English. Okay? Yeshua equals Isu. Isu equals Jesus. So the reason that we get Jesus when we read our English Bibles is because the writers of the New Testament wrote in the Greek language. Koine Greek is what it's called. And whenever they write in the Greek language, they translate his name to the Greek language. So I kind of think of it as this. Um, I used to work at a place that, like, actually, I don't know, predominantly probably spoke Spanish, but there were a mix of both. And so when I talked to the people in Spanish, I would call myself Pablo. I would introduce myself as Pablo because Pablo is Paul in Spanish. But when I spoke to English people, I would, uh, English speaking people, I would uh, say my name is Paul. And so whenever I talked to each one of them, I would either refer by myself as Pablo or as Paul. Now, when they come to know me and they understand me, I don't think that they um, felt that they didn't know me or they didn't recognize who I was or that I was a different person just because when I spoke to English speaking people, they called me Paul or when I spoke to Spanish speaking people, they called me Pablo. They just recognized that that was what I went by when speaking to their preferred language. So in the same way, I think that's how we can see this about Jesus is Yeshua is his Hebrew Aramaic name while Isu is his Greek name and then Jesus in English. Now there is one more thing I'd like to add about that is that Yeshua in the Old Testament is actually Joshua. So Yeshua equals Joshua in English. Yeshua in Aramaic equals Joshua in English. Now I'm bringing this up because I want to show you how in the New Testament that that name Yeshua is not uncommonly used. And so when we look at Yeshua or Joshua being translated into the Greek language in the New Testament, we see it's Isu as well because Jesus' name in Hebrew is Yeshua and then Yeshua to English is Joshua. So if we look at a couple of passages in scripture, you'll see what I'm talking about. So in the, um, the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 45, we see that the, um, I believe this is Stephen. Um, Stephen refers to Joshua and what he did. And so uh, it, I'll bring up a couple of different translations. One will be the King James Version. And one will be the uh, um, New International Version. And then the other one will actually be the Greek. And I'll point out these things for you. So in the New International Version, we see in verse 45, it says, After receiving the tabernacle, our ancestors under Joshua brought it with them when they took the land 
from the nations God drove out before them. That's the New International Version. Now, if we look at the Greek, we will see that name that is used is Isu. This is uh, Pateris Hemon Meta Isu in Te Kata Se. Uh, I can't really see the whole thing, but we'll end there because we see Isu. That's the name of Jesus. Now, when we refer over to the King James, get your King James versions out, it says, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drove, drave, whew, this is King James tough, who God drave out before the face of our fathers. You see, because Joshua, which is Yeshua in Hebrew, and Yeshua equals Isu in Greek, what well, we see in the King James Version, that it doesn't say Joshua. It says Jesus. You see, originally, uh, before any of this uh, modern translations came out, it was understood that Jesus was the name for Joshua. I wouldn't say it's understood that Jesus is the name for Joshua specifically, but it's understood that Jesus was a common name in that era. And so when the writers translated it, they translated Joshua to Isu, which is the the Greek, and then they translated Greek into Jesus. They translated the Greek of Isu into Jesus, because that is what the writers wrote. But now, in modern translations, since we know that Isu is actually the translation of Yeshua from the Aramaic to the Greek, or Joshua in English, that they wanted to make the distinction between Jesus and Joshua in the scriptures to make it absolutely clear that when speaking of Jesus we are speaking about Jesus Christ and so whenever these pop up about Jesus it might confuse a reader of the scriptures that this is not the Jesus who has risen from the dead but a Jesus from the past another verse that's really uh, kind of like goes with this that that really brings out the understanding is in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8 uh, the writer of Hebrews speaks about Joshua he says for if Joshua had given them rest God would not have spoken later about another day and then in the Greek it says uh, uh, I gar autus isu and the words are cut off I'm sorry I don't finish but it says autus isu and we see that's Jesus isu um, and then it says in the in the King James Version, we say, For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? You see how confusing that might be if we read this and say, because he's going to ultimately say that Jesus is the rest. And so wouldn't it be awkward or confusing to think if Jesus didn't give them rest, then how did Jesus give them rest now? And so I believe that is why the modern translators translate it in this way. While they have changed and when they recognize that the Jesus that is spoken of is actually not the Jesus Christ in whom raised from the dead, but it's another Jesus or a um um or a um or Joshua specifically from the Old Testament, as we refer to them in the Old Testament, then they want to use that name so there is no confusion between it. And so what I really want to say is um, is that if you feel like, man, that you found out that, that Jesus' name is Yeshua, well, I don't want you to be confused or feel as if the scriptures are in some way um, lying or uh, uh or in some way confusing or if if uh you don't feel like you know him because you didn't know his name what i want to encourage you is to recognize that man you know his name his name is jesus that is his name that is the name in which he's called in the scriptures isu translated to jesus now he is also yeshua if you speak an aramaic or hebrew and yeshua is is um um how you you know him by then yeshua is his name as well but he is yeshua jesus joshua he is all those names in the specific ways in which you want to translate them and so man i just want to encourage you that you know him you know his name you know who he is and that you can trust the scriptures to be absolutely clear 
about who he is. And that is the reason why that modern translators translate other Jesuses in the scripture as Joshua, because they want us as as uh, um, English speakers. And that can be a bit confusing to us as we read through the scriptures that we absolutely are sure about Jesus Christ, who he is and what he's done separate from all of these other Jesuses that occur in the Bible who have done wonderful things, but could not do the things that our Savior can do. I hope that encourages you. I hope that lets you know the power and the wonder of his name, that we can be rest assured and have faith and hope in it and trust the scriptures that we read and know that because we know him, we can trust him. And if we trust him, how wonderful the things he'll do in our lives. All right, guys. Appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video.